Hey, hi everyone, this is Davide from the Azure SQL PM team. What I want to show you today is an amazing feature that has been in Azure SQL for a while, but probably not a lot of developers are using it or at least are aware of it. And it's, it's really amazing because it can really help you to simplify your code because it will take care for you of all the heavy lifting that you need to do to allow uh, offline or partially connected application, like a mobile application, to sync with the data you have in the cloud. Now let me show you how uh, you can take advantage of it and how simple could be your code. So to simulate my mobile application, I will just use curl and I will call uh, exactly the same point I pretend to have called the first time when I got my full data set. But this time I will call exactly the same endpoint using uh, also an additional uh, parameter called from version. Uh, and in this case, I'm saying I got version 24 the first time I, I synced. I want to have all the changes from version 24, which is I have in my mobile application, up to the version that exists at, the mo at this moment. And that version is 29, as you can see. And in fact, I get all the differences and all the changes that happened from version 24, which I received before, to version 29, which is the current one. And if I apply all that changes, my version will exactly be updated to version 29. I will show you how this can be done using basically only SQL and just a few lines of C Sharp code. So let's see how Change Tracking API can really help to simplify development of an application that must sync between a mobile device to the cloud. So I have my training session table here. I already went on and added some sample data here. And this is the first time I want to sync with the cloud. So my mobile application will call my training session sync API for the first time without any additional parameters. What I expect is to receive the full data set because I never synced it before, right? And here it is. In fact, uh, the metadata section is telling me I'm receiving the full data set and all the data is available here, as you can see. ID 29 and 30 are exactly the two rows that are available in my database. And there is something additional here that it's interesting to notice is the version. The version number, 26. 26 doesn't really mean anything, could have been any number. The only thing it's important right now, since it's the f this is the full data set that I received, is that I keep this version somewhere because it will be used in future to only get the difference that happened between this data set that I received and whatever data set will be current at that moment in time when I call my sync API. Now, let's say that uh, someone uh, uses the, the data with an online uh, uh, application or someone did some changes to the data and actually that's exactly what, what we are going to simulate at, uh, right now. So let's simulate that we somehow are inserting some data right in the cloud without using the mobile application. So I'm adding a new training session and uh, and here as you can see my ID30 at step zero which is probably not correct, right? So let's let's pretend that on the cloud we did some magic and we recalculated the steps and we want to update it. So what I have to do here is to just, you know, update my uh, training session steps. And uh, uh, that's it. Now it's time for my mobile application to sync again. So what I will call is again the same API, but this time I will say, hey, I want to start from version 26 because that's what I got before, right? So I just want to get only the changes that happen between version 26, which is what I already have, and whatever is the current version. So I will go on and execute this, and that's what we got. So first of all, first of all, here, we notice that the current version is version 28, and I'm receiving only a differential data set, which means that I will get in the data section all the information along the operation needed to make sure that uh, my data set, which is version 26, can be upgraded to version 28, which is the current one. And in fact, if I just update my row with ID 30 with this data, and I insert a new row in my local data set with ID 31, my local data set will look like, will actually be the same as the data set that exists 
in the server, in the cloud, and it will be updated to version 28. Now let's say that again, someone works with my data on the cloud and they delete um, and they delete a session. Let's say they delete version 29 here. So good. So what I'm going to do right now is sync with the version I received before. And right now the new version is version 29. I only get the differential data set, which says to me that I just need to delete the row with ID 29 to make sure that my existing dataset will be updated from version 20, 28 to version 29. And this is pretty, pretty amazing, I would say, even because now let's see what happened if instead I'm starting from scratch, because let's say I restart, I restarted my application, I wiped my phone, and I just want to get everything back. Well, I will get again a full dataset with only the rows that exist at this moment in time. But what if for some reason I have an old application uh, or an old mobile phone with an old version of application lying somewhere and execute that application again on that uh, old phone, which maybe have version, let's say 21. Well, I will receive all the changes I need to apply to make sure that I can move from version 21 to version 29, which is the current. And as you can see here, I need to change uh, to delete a row, I need to in insert a new row, and I need to insert another new row here. So, what is amazing of Change Tracking API is that it will do all the heavy lifting work for me because it will return to me exactly the list of operation that I need to apply on my data so that it will be updated from whatever version I have to the current version. And that's honestly pretty amazing. So, what is the feature and the function that allows Azure SQL to create such an amazing service to us. Well, it's the change table. Of course, I already went on before and you will find everything in the in the GitHub repo here, but basically I already enabled change tracking on that specific table. That's basically everything you have to do. Uh, you just enable the change tracking and from that on, you can use the change table. So let's simulate here, I had my version 21. So I can ask Azure SQL, hey, can you give me all the table that happened on the training session table from version 21 up to now? And here they are. So all the information regarding what happened to each row identified here by the primary key of that row with the operation and the version which that change happened. So I can even go even further back in time if I want, let's say from version 15. Again, I will get everything or maybe I have something new here. I want to say what happened since version 27. Now, all I need to do is join this table, this uh, result using the ID with my original table, the training session, and that's it. After that, I will just apply a for JSON statement so that the entire result will be return it as a JSON to me. And then all I need to do, to do is just take the JSON, return it to the client, and that's it. So this is the story procedure that, for example, does exactly what I, what I say, right? So it just query the change table, joins the data with the training session, and return the data exactly in the shape we want, even adding the metadata information. So as you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. So easy, in fact, that the C sharp code is really, really simple. Um, I just have to, you know, co connect to my Azure SQL, execute uh, the store procedure, and uh, passing some parameter. But then, basically, I just return. I, I receive a JSON, as you can see, and I just return the JSON as is. So it's amazing because the chain tracking API allow me to do something that would otherwise be really, really complex and time consuming in a kind of a snap of finger, right? And I will keep the code uh, of my controller, uh, as you can see here, very simple, very lean. So this will mean easier uh, maintenance and I can just focus more on the things that are more important to me than just, you know, creating plumbing code and doing the heavy lifting for, for a feature that already exists in Azure SQL. So please take a look at the, the repository here and yeah, just 
start to use this feature is just amazing. I don't understand why you're not using it yet. So go on and do it right now. See you next time.